Hello my soccer universe, let's review match day 3 of the Nations League campaign from 24-25. If I look at all the results that happened, there's one that sticks out and I usually don't like to pick a result that happened on the first match day. However, Greece's win over England is just the biggest story. It's a big story because there was tragedy before that. George Baldock, born in England but playing for the Greek national team, has just passed away the day before the game. It was reported that the Greek national team players didn't even sleep and then they win a big one in his honor in a crucial clash for Greece because now they're sitting top of the Nations League group three points ahead of England. It was a major win for Greece for gaining promotion into League A. But then add to it the emotional component. Boy, this was a great win. It also was kind of a coming apart for interim manager Lee Carsley. All the hype that we got from September where they played so open and so on. He put everyone into the lineup. And it didn't work. Greece were actually better and could have won by a much higher scoreline. That adds to the whole thing. So for me, this bar none is the outstanding result. Other than that, we had a notable 2-2 draw between Italy and Belgium. Rather crazy. We had Spain beating Denmark. We had, of course, the big Slovakia against Sweden clash in League C that ended also in a 2-2 draw despite the Swedes having a 2-0 lead. Another crazy game. Great goals in there as well. We have Group B1 being completely open as Ukraine beat leaders Georgia getting their first win. So this group is very level as well. Austria back on track. However, they face tonight the big one in Norway. I'll be there at that game. Really looking forward to this one. And yes, San Marino also didn't get a win. In any case, those are just my few thoughts ahead of it. Let's review the entire action and I'll see you on the other side. Without stretching themselves too much, France got an easy 4-1 away win at Israel. Away, it was played in Budapest, but Israel were just inferior opposition, so the class of France came through. The opening goal was a wide shot from Kolomiani that was completely fumbled by the goalkeeper. However, the equalizer for Israel in 24th minute was also optional defending by the France defense. Theo Hernandez caught in no man's land, and Congo re-establishes the lead, and then France go from strength to strength there. Wendouzi in the 87th and Barcola in the 89th make it a proper score line again was nothing really to talk much home about. However the big matchup was the one in Rome between Italy and Belgium and before we go into the game can I just mention how much I hate the Belgian kids as a set with having a blue away jersey you cannot play any blue team away from home and the red jersey is too dark that it also provides a color clash and so Italy had to play again in their absolutely awful away jerseys. However Italy played well call out the Belgian defense left and right or in the first minute Cambiaso taps in a cross from Di Marco and then the other way around it was Cambiaso crossing in for the take in the 24th minute. It was an easy tunnel lead and you thought Italy are gonna go from strength to strength. However, then Pellegrini is sent off having his foot a little bit too high and hitting the back heel and from that free kick brilliantly played by Belgium Tielemans over to Trossa who lays it off for the Kuiper. It's 2-1 and Belgium are very much back in the game and suddenly Italy are hanging back where they're even more under pressure when Trossa in the 61st minute already makes it 2-2 and I really thought oh Italy might not hang on but then Paletti decides okay I need to shore up the defense we need to get a little bit more compact Italy see it out as a 2-2 maybe there could have been even a penalty laid on to win it for them the draw definitely helps Italy more than it does Belgium in the larger scheme of things in Zeneca Bosnia really tried to challenge Germany however Germany were just a better team even though they have a slightly revamped squad now post the Euros Undorf in the first nice attacking move by the Germans they sent it's deep who back heals it to Undorf 1 0 30th minute. Yes, Bosnia then hit the crossbar in a counter attack, but also Kleinis had a goal disallowed. Six minutes after the 1 0 Undorf after Mittelstädt assist makes it 2 0 for Germany. Second half, Bosnia tried to come and they got a goal back by who else? Jeko after Tahirovic corner, but in the end Germany saw it out easily, even had a few more chances. It was also quite an interesting game in Budapest where the Dutch playing in blue against the red Hungarians, a little bit of a color clash I would say, dominated the first half, creating chances, especially Reinders really was instrumental in getting attacks going, however on the other side they couldn't put the ball into the net. There was even a situation where the Dutch had an indirect free kick right next 
next to the penalty spot. And so it was a counterattack by the Hungarians in the 32nd minute, where Nagy crosses it in Schalle on the other post is completely forgotten by the Dutch. Defense and scores the first goal for Hungary. In the second half, Hungary were much better in the game and could keep the Dutch at bay. Even got a boost when Virgil van Dijk got two yellow cards in short succession. He's sent off, which is also crucial for the upcoming match against Germany. And you thought that Hungary will get the win. However, just four minutes after that red card, a Gakpo free kick finds Denzel Dumfries on the back post, who heads it in with some oomph. It ends 1-1. Yes, Hungary then probably was a little bit more pushing for that win, being a man more, but I think overall was probably a deserved draw. Same old story for Scotland in Croatia, like in other League A games on their maiden journey in League A. They hang with the opposition. Position. They are well in the game and they end up on the losing side. This time they take a lead through Christy. Yes, Croatia were a little bit better. They had a more competent team overall and quickly equalized then through Matanovic just four minutes after the Scots took the lead. Then Croatia put on the pressure, take the lead through Kramaric header in the 70th minute. And then it's the late search by Scotland who have a late equalizer by Shea Adams disallowed, who also had a good chance before that. Croatia who get the second win. Over in Warsaw, Portugal showed especially in the first half how irresistible they can be so much threat from either of the flanks Rafa Leao showed more in this game than he did for the entire season for Milan the opener though came from a deep ball that is headed back by Bruno Fernandes into the path of Bernardo Silva who takes a shot 1-0 and Portugal are off and running and then Leao takes on seemingly the entire Polish defense. His shot goes onto the post and Ronaldo can tap it in for his umpteenth goal for Portugal. And the Polish crowd even celebrated with him. Second half. Yes, Poland tried to push forward to get more to the game. However, the chances then all fell to Portugal with the irresistible speed again. Rafa Leao running through the entire defense, putting it onto Bruno Fernandes who sees his effort saved. Yes, Zielinski then pulls one back. There is a mad surge. In the end, Nuno Mensch crosses it in and it's a bad like own goal that settles the game fully deservedly for Portugal. Portugal continue to be impressive, only they could show this at the finals tournament. After the great Euro, Switzerland remain in a funk. This time they lose to Serbia away from home 2 0 and are now bottom in their group. It was an Elvedi own goal that gives Serbia deserved lead right before the halftime break. And then Mitrovic with a great shot doubles the lead in the 61st minute and all hopes for Switzerland to come back are thwarted when Rajkovic saves an Mbolo penalty. Meanwhile, Spain take over the lead in Group A4 with a 1-0 win in Murcia. A very hard-fought win. Yes, Spain had more chances. For instance, in the first half, Alvaro Morata and Lamin Yamal free on goal. Cannot pull it into net. However, Denmark in the first half also had their dangerous chances. Kasper Dolenberg twice being put into good scoring positions. However, Raya always managed to save the situations. The winning goal after tons of pressure by the Spanish in the second half came through Subimendi. However, there was a potential foul by Merino in the build-up. The ball then falls back to Subimendi who takes a shot from outside the box. It takes a wicked deflection. Schmeichel does not look good on that one. Regardless, Spain get the deserved win. So going over the standings, we see that Portugal is still perfect with Croatia also now in good shape of advancing. Italy, France and Belgium got much tighter due to the draw. I still think that Italy and France will advance from there. Germany and Netherlands are the class of the group. However, Hungary creeping up a little bit and then Spain and Denmark look like the two teams that qualify from their group. Austria have their first win in this nation's campaign, an easy 4-0 over Kazakhstan in Linz. This was one-way traffic. It was only 1-0 through a Baumgartner goal in the first half. was a little bit belying the way that the game went. Plenty of chances. The Kazakh goalkeeper did actually quite well there. However, in the second half then, Austria makes it a proper scoreline. Linhardt heads in a Romano Schmidt corner in the 54th minute. Two minutes later, Sabitzer adds a third. And then very late on, Seidel also scores. Austrian team back in business in Nations League Group B. Three. Over in Norway, the Norwegians took on Slovenia and this was the Holland show, who with two goals is now the leading top scorer for Norway overall. Clearly, best goal scorer that Norway ever had. Slovenia did have a few chances, however, this was all, as I said, Norway. Holland scoring two, could have had a hat-trick in between circles just after the half, uh, made the second goal. Where also, Holland was involved in this group. It is very much between Austria and Norway and the two of them will be meeting on Sunday in Linz. <music> 
Group B2 saw two relatively unexpected away wins. The big one, of course. Greece going to Wembley and beating England 2-1 away from home. Lee Carsley relying on all the stars in his lineup, but that was relatively unbalanced. And Greece were really dangerous. Could have taken the lead already in the first half. There was a last-ditch clearance after Pickford went out on a journey. Greece then take the lead in the second half through Pavlidis. 49th minute. England, I've seen mostly free kicks in the highlights that were even to me. Pavlidis even had a goal this a lot for Austin in the 83rd minute just a few minutes later Bellingham scores the equalizer and you think yeah England might get away with one <laughs> when stoppage time again optional defending by England Pelkos plays it over to Pavlidis who gets a win in honor of their fallen teammate. Ireland also deserved a 2-1 comeback win in Finland despite a really bad defensive error gifting the ball to Poyan Palo who gives Finland a one and a half to mid however Ireland already had a few chances there. Scales gets an equalizer in the second half and late on Brady wins it with a shot nicely in the roof of the net. There was plenty of League B action yesterday in Prague. The Czechs got a very resounding 2-0 win over Albania. Kuari scoring both goals in the third and the 63rd minute however there could have been way more goals in there as well this was one-way traffic in a very atmospheric stadium in Poznan Ukraine took on Georgia a battle of two former Soviet republics both under pressure from Russia as well so there's a little bit brotherhood there Ukraine get their first win thanks to Mihailo Mudrik goal where he makes a run across the box and then from far out puts it into the net Ukraine overall I would say the better team Georgia had their chances they also a goal disallowed in the 89th minute however on the balance of things, I think Ukraine deserved the first win of this Nations League campaign. We had a pretty wild 2-2 draw in Reykjavik between Iceland and Wales, where Wales had a 2-0 lead. First of Brennan Johnson taps in a goal line save from the Icelandic goalkeeper in the 11th minute, and then Nico Williams sends Harry Wilson at 29th 1-1 one -on -one with the goalie. It's 2-0 Wales and you think they're gonna see this through for another win. Five in the second half Iceland came storming back. They managed to get a goal back in the 16th minute with a really nice shot by Thomas and then just three minutes later, the Thomas again near goal plays it onto the back of Ward and into the net. Meanwhile, Turkey take the top now of Group B4. However, it was a game of attrition because Montenegro kept it really, really tight, had some early chances themselves. However, they were mostly defending, but it was an impact substitution when Kenan Yildiz came on and just a few seconds after he takes a shot, it hits the post and Kavici taps it home for a 1-0 win for Turkey. As I already said, Group B1 wide open now. Georgia and the Czechs are just ahead of Albania and Ukraine. Greece having a big one over England. Will England actually make it directly into League A or do they have to go through a playoff? That will be a major one. Thankfully, they have the playoff now. Now, when Austria took it out for the top spot as well, although these two seem like the ones that will go through. And then Turkey and Wales also set on to for the top two spots. In Group C4, North Macedonia take really control of the group thanks to a 3-0 away win over Latvia. A scoreline that looks way more emphatic than the game was because Latvia did have some chances. However, it was North Macedonia who had the better players and that shown through. Atanasov giving North Macedonia the lead in the first half. Kamili doubling the lead and then a great shot by Elmas, the pick of the bunch, made it 3-0. A scoreline that was definitely a little bit unfair on Latvia. And then in the evening, Armenia dropped points on the Faroe Islands. They actually could have lost the game because the Faroes took twice the lead. Great shot by Benjaminson. And then Bertalit in the 85th minute thought he had given the Faroe Islands a winner. However, Manvelian in stoppage time gets the equalizer for Armenia, who actually had equalized the first time through beautiful Selarayan free kick. In Group C1, Estonia got a rare win, 3-1 over Azerbaijan. There were actually quite some crazy goals in there, very optional defending by Azerbaijan, especially on the first goal where Yakovlev can run through and has an empty net in front of him. Bayramov equalizes via penalty in stoppage time, <laughs> however from the kickoff, they again forget everyone in the Estonian defense. It is a very easy go-ahead goal just before the half, a minute after that equalizer and then Shane with a really nice goal makes it 3-1. Big point points for Estonia. However, all the eyes in this group were on the big clash between Slovakia and Sweden in Bratislava. It was overall a relatively even tightly matched affair. First half advantage Sweden. Sweden actually had a 2-0 lead. The first goal came when a Kulusevski Maisy run and shot was then blocked and Ayari gets his first goal for Sweden by more or less one timing it into the net. A few minutes later was actually a nice attacking move where Jökeres shot is again blocked by the goalie and then Sema taps it in from a short distance. However, 
Strelec just before the half gives Slovakia a lifeline and then Slovakia were on top for the second half and it's Strelec with the nicest attacking move via Haraslin who get Slovakian equalizer so the two big dogs remain level on points in their group with Sweden having the better goal difference. With a 2-1 away win in Lithuania the Kosovo is well in contention for gaining promotion from group C2. The win overall was deserved goals by Shigrova and Krasnici gave them a 2-0 lead. However then there was a wonky moment when Golubikas pulled one back for Lithuania. However I think Kosovo deserved their win. Meanwhile Romania proved that they are the class of this group. Getting a really easy 3-0 win in Cyprus. Dennis Mann opens the scoring in the 16th minute and then they keep on scoring every 10 minutes. Marin from a penalty spot and Dragoshin with a header in the 36th minute already established the final scoreline in the first half, second half. They see it all easily. There were so many Romanian fans in Larnaca I also found that very curious. And it was squaring the zero in Group C3. Both games ending in nil-nil draws. My eyes were on Bulgaria against Luxembourg. Luxembourg probably the slightly better team with Bulgaria having the better chances. Not much to talk home about that one. And even less so when Northern Ireland drew Belarus in Hungary in an empty stadium to Riri. With the draw, Sweden now slight advantage over Slovakia, they are the stronger team. Azerbaijan holds on to go down, big win for Estonia. Romania should make it directly into League B, Kosovo have a chance via the playoffs, Bulgaria, Belarus, Northern Ireland all level and Luxembourg is also in the mix still, although they're the only team that has not gotten a win yet. And then Northern Macedonia look very much the class of their group. Armenia should make it, but gotta see. in Group D2, Moldova didn't really need to stretch themselves to beat Andorra 2-0. They opened the scoring after a nice play through Ioannita in the 31st minute and then get the final scoreline, deep in stoppage time. Over in Gibraltar, we did not get another San Marino miracle. San Marino's defending, especially after that ball situation, was really sketchy. Gibraltar probably could have won by more. They actually won it from open play when a Brito shot from a relatively acute angle went through the goalkeeper's hands. Gibraltar now in command of Group D1. And as much as I'm on San Marino's side for now, and their chances are not over, but they have to get a second win, which proves to be elusive for them. Gibraltar are the head of that group now, and Moldova dominate the second group. So as for the upcoming matches, it all comes down to Germany against Netherlands on Monday. That's a big one. We also have Belgium against France. Not that uninteresting. Uh, Tuesday, I think the Poland-Croatia matchup could be an interesting one because Poland need to win that game if they want to stay in contention for advancing. I've already mentioned it. Austria-Norway. That's for spot one in Linz. Austria need to beat Norway and probably should get a two-goal lead to have the tiebreaker over the Norwegians. We also have Finland, England and Greece against Ireland. That could be crucial as well for the fate of the three Lions and the Greeks, of course. And then, of course, any matches of Group B1 are something to watch out for. This is very evenly matched. In League C, there are also two that stick out for me. Armenia against North Macedonia. That's for the group win with Armenia needing a win. And then also Northern Ireland against Bulgaria in that very, very tight group as well. And as for League D, Will Liechtenstein get a win over Gibraltar and completely open up that group? I think that's the most interesting part there. Moldova should get a win or at least a draw. So that was it from me from the Edge of the Nations League. Please let me know what you thought about all these games. Let me know where your team is standing. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will report of course from the austria Norway game and from all other matches in the next video. Up until then, bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!